Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me here today for another piano lesson with Warren. If you're new to my channel, remember to give me a subscribe below, a thumbs up, and leave a comment in the box because I always like to hear from you guys. In today's uh, lesson, we're going to take a look at the chromatic medians. I've gotten a lot of questions about this. What is a chromatic median? What do I use it for when I'm playing? So I'm going to, you know, shed some light, explain to you what those are and how they're used in modern music today. So stay tuned. So before we can understand chromatic medians, we first have to look at what a median is. And we also have to go a little step further or step back to understand how is this related to the scale. So take, for example, the C major scale. In, chroma in a, a classical theory, they assign particular names to each of these keys. So they call the one or the root the tonic, the second the supertonic, the third the median, the fourth the subdominant, the fifth the dominant, the sixth the submedian, the seventh the leading tone, and then we go back to the octave. So that's the names assigned to the notes of the major scale in that order. So that's where it comes from. But the ones we're gonna focus on today is the medians. The third note of the major scale is called the median. The sixth tone of the major scale is referred to as the submedian. And medians just basically uh, notes that are a third apart, either a major third or a minor third. And so if we take C for example, this would be a diatonic median, the E. A would be the diatonic submedian. Chromatic medians now mean that they are a third apart, but not belonging to the same diatonic key. For example, we're going to look at chords. If I take C major and E major, the roots of these chords are a third apart. Yeah, but they're not in the same diatonic key. E major is not a diatonic chord of C major. It's supposed to be E minor. Likewise, if I take A major, C major, the roots are a third apart, <clears throat> but they're not from the same diatonic key. There's no A major in the key of C. It's only A minor. And therefore, E major and A major is a chromatic median in relation to C. There's a chromatic median relationship. Now, with that rule in mind, there are six chords that are chromatic medians to every key on the keyboard. <clears throat> so, C major has six chromatic medians chord relating, relating to it. Same thing with D, same thing with E flat, same thing with every chord, there's gonna be six associated chromatic median chords. And how do we find those? Well, we already established two of them. If we take the three chord of any major key, we raise it a half step, I mean, make the chord major, then we get the first chromatic median. So if we're in the key of C, we take E major, that's chromatic median number one. We take A major, that's chromatic median number two. The other chromatic medians now are A flat major. And again, the roots are a third apart, major third. So E flat, A flat major is one another chromatic median of C, but also A flat minor, because the roots are still a third apart. With that in mind, we go up to E flat major. That's the next chromatic median because the roots of each chord are still a third apart. <clears throat> and the last chromatic median for the key of C would be, or for the chord C, would be E flat minor because the roots are still a third apart. So the chromatic medians for the key chord C is E major, <clears throat> A major, a flat major, 
A flat minor, E flat major, and the sixth one, E flat minor. So what you have to remember <clears throat> that chromatic medians are always a third apart, either a major third or a minor third. And with that rule, you're going to realize that each chord gives you six chromatic medians. Let's take another one, say F minor. If I take chord F minor, what would be the chromatic medians for F minor? First thing you have to also remember is that it has to be a chord that is non-diatonic to the key. Or F minor. So then my sixth chromatic medium would be A major, A minor, because those two chords are non-diatonic to the key of F minor. If I also go up to e flat, A flat minor, that's another one. If I go now a third down to C sharp major, I mean minor, <clears throat> that's chromatic median number four. And if I go up to F major, I mean D major, chromatic median number five. And D minor, chromatic median number six. So that's how you find them. Just find the notes that are a third apart, the minor, minor or the major, and make sure those notes are not diatonic to the key. <clears throat> and that's basically what those chromatic medians are. Now, how do we use these? Chromatic medians sort of gain its popularity in the 18th century with romantic music, classical romantic music, you know, Ravel, Debussy, Tchaikovsky, you know, all those romantic classical composers. And you'll hear it a lot in orchestral music. So, for example, you'd hear something like... See what I did there? I went from C minor to E flat minor. These two chords are non-diatonic, but they share a chromatic median relationship. And so composers back then would use these chromatic medians as transitional chords to create all sorts of colors and textures and also use them as modulations. Take C major. So I'm just moving between C major and E flat major, those two keys, and I'm playing sort of like a pentatonic scale over the chord. And you hear how it sort of gives the song a lift, a lift when I go to that E flat ma uh, major. So that's a chromatic median relationship. I could have also go uh, do something like this. And I just went to A flat minor and it gives it that dark shift, you know? This sort of pretty uh, passage then turned dark. And so composers use this for a lot of emotions. You'll also hear this kind of movement popular in a lot of film score music. So The Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, all of those famous score music, you hear this kind of movements. And it's just, ah, once you hear it, you can go, oh, that's a chromatic median shift right there. So that's how they use it in classical music. Now, the way I like to use it, in more of modern contemporary uh, uh, gospel, I like to use them as passing chords. For example, if I'm going from a C to a F, 
I would use the E chromatic median chord to propel me to F, and so you'd have something like this. So. So. I just use that E7. I don't play them as triads, but I would extend them. So with this one, you can play E7 and it takes you to F nicely. Passing chord. You can even extend it beyond just the seventh to something like sharp five, sharp nine, or the E altered chord. What if I'm doing a 2-5 two five, two five passing to get to 4? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. I can throw that chromatic median passing in there. <laughs> One more time. Uh, uh, uh. And the chromatic median passing. That's one place I use it a lot. Whenever going to four, I can use that three as a chromatic median to take me to chord four. And you can experiment with the voicing. You can make it altered chord, dominant seventh, and so on. Another thing that you can use chromatic median chords for are for what we call the common tone modulation. You know, and common tone modulation meaning that there's a note that is common to both chords. For example, C major and A flat. The common tone in these two chords is C, so I can do something like. And I'm in the key of C sharp by simply using that A flat. I talked about modulation uh, two videos back and I didn't really stress the importance of uh, common tone modulation and that's one way. Let's take a song, thinking off the top of my head, the song, let's say Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It was grace that. And you see, right there, I just, instead of resolving that chord, I. If I wanted to take that uh, song up a second, uh, uh, <laughs> I can't think. If I wanted to take that song up a half step, then I can use that chromatic median, which happens to be the five of the new key that I'm going to. It's blind, but now I And that's another place you can use chromatic median as a common tone modulation. Now the last thing I'm going to show you today for chromatic median is how the neo soul guys use it as progressions. A lot of the uh, a lot of neo soul songs that you hear now and those progressions are basically utilizing the concept of chromatic chromatic median. And so, you know, take a look at something like this. And you go, yep, that definitely sounds like some neo soul chord progressions right there. And what am I doing? I'm just playing like C major 13th chords, E flat, 
which is the chromatic medium of C, and I go into D, but then look at from D to D flat. I mean, not D, B flat to D flat. See that? Chromatic medium relationship again. And then from here, I come back down to my C major. Those four chords, and you get a neo soul progression. And a part of what gives it that modern sound is because of the extensions that I'm using. Major 13th. Yeah. Or. And you get that nice neo soul chord progression right there. If you want to learn more about how to voice these 13 chords and move them comfortably, you want to check out my course, Fat Chords, over at Piano Lesson with Warren. So that's, in a nutshell, chromatic medians. It's a very powerful tool that, as you can see, you can use for neo soul, common tone modulation. You know, you can use it to shift entire passages. Classical guys just do immense sort of compositions with these concepts and movements to really create color in the music. So go forth and go have some fun with chromatic medians. All right, as always, thank you for watching. Keep listening, keep singing, and keep practicing because this is how you will continue to grow as a musician. Remember to give me a subscribe and a thumbs up if you have not done so already. Catch you in the next tutorial. Have a blessed evening.